bit. You had the opportunity to give some advice to an incoming freshman who was thinking about starting with a STEM major. What might you tell them? Um, the intro classes are interesting, but they're not what the major is about. The intro classes are just like any other major. They're intro classes. The real fun starts in the upper div classes. So if you can take an upper div class, take that as soon as possible. Or take one of the classes that is taught, um, take one of the classes that is taught through the science and society um, major or something like that. A lot of those are good intros to the subject without being um, laborious on points that you don't necessarily need to learn. Uh, you do need to learn them if you're going to be the, in that major, but what's more important if you're deciding, first deciding whether you want to be a STEM major or not, is figuring out if you're excited about that sort of a thing. So to do that, you're not going to get that in the intro stuff because it's just background. More support, the more important thing to do is to get an idea of what someone would do as an engineer, or what someone would do as a biologist. And so that comes in the upper div classes, or it comes in experience. If you can talk to professors about what they do, that's great. That's, that's you know, the biggest thing. If you can even get into a lab, that's going to really help you decide whether or not, you know, you want to do that or not. But don't write off a subject just because you don't like the intro class. Tons of people write off chemistry because they take gen chem and they say, oh my god, this thing is so boring. Tons of people, you know, write off physics because they're forced into, you know, physics classes that are not appropriate for them and, and or they think it's too hard. But really, it's very exciting if you get to the meat of the subject and the meat of the subject is not going to be in the beginning classes. Go to office hours. Everyone says this, but really, go to office hours. Because if you go to office hours, don't, even if you don't have a question, I'm sure there will be other people there and they will have questions. If there are not other people there, ask the professor what they do. Ask them what they're researching. If they're a lecturer, ask them what they did their PhD on. And learn about what they did because that's going to be something that really gives you an idea of what the field is about. And, you know, if you're not, if it's not interesting to you, then that's truly going to sort of tell you whether you're interested in the field or not. Are there any classes that you find too difficult for their level, too boring, or not appropriate for your track? Um, so I'm a big believer in diversifying my education within the STEM fields as much as possible before I uh, concentrate as a uh, PhD student in grad school. I've uh, not really done what a lot of people in my track have done. Um, I've taken math classes that tend to be more hard than what we're supposed to take, and I've also taken chemistry classes that are supposed to be not, that are not required for my major. Um, and I was going to do that with physics, but decided not to because I'm studying abroad. And that is my one regret. I don't regret the math classes, hard as they were. I don't regret the chemistry, as terribly hard as that was. I really regret not taking higher level physics because seven series, which is the physics biology majors take, uh, is a poor excuse for a physics class. Um, and I know it supposedly raises MCAT scores, and I know it supposedly has this great new approach to teaching, but it's not its approach to teaching that I have a problem with. It's its approach to physics that I have a problem with. And given I'm a bio major, I don't really have any background to comment on this in, but I strongly feel that calculus-free physics is not physics that anyone can really call physics. I mean, yes, calculus is difficult. We don't like calculus as bio majors often, but I'm sure we can handle it if it meant not having to do the things that we have to do in Physics 7. Physics 7 would be wonderful for uh, an elementary school setting. Would 
highly recommend they actually take this to elementary schools because if I were a kid in elementary school and if I had had that in elementary school, I would have probably become a physics major because I would have been super excited, we would have been doing cool things in class all the time, but as a college student, as a college uh, sophomore taking that class, I felt really talked down to and I felt almost insulted um, reading my textbook. No, I felt insulted reading my textbook. Um, I felt like uh, it, it really put me off physics, which is not something that a physics class or any class in any subject should do, um, if it, especially if it's supposed to be an integrative experience that's supposed to get you excited about something. It sort of failed. Okay, can you tell me, uh, you know, a little bit about what advising and tutoring services you think Faraday gave us and how effective you think they were? So, I have never gone to tutoring, um, but that is mainly because, not because I don't know about it, it's mainly because when I was taking classes that tutoring was offered for, I um, had friends who were also doing it and I went to office hours and that was enough for me. Uh, but one class that I really would have liked to have tutoring in, and I'm sure everyone else in the class would have loved to have tutoring in, but they don't offer it, was the Chemistry 128 series um, for organic chemistry. Please, you have 118 tutoring and you have eight tutoring, but you don't have 128, and we are very sad about this fact and would love to see 128 tutors um, have a plea from, from the organic chemistry students. But uh, I've, as far as advising goes, I think I've been advised by almost every department. Not really. Um, I have employed major advising services, minor advising services, and my two minors. Um, I've gone to the graduate advising center and to the study abroad center, and I already talked about um, how I think collaboration between uh, the advising centers would be nice because they all know quite a lot about what it is they do, but they don't know very much about what they should do for your situation because you are not just someone who wants to go to grad school. You are, you are someone who wants to go to grad school as a biologist, or you are not just someone who wants to study abroad, you are someone who wants to study abroad and do grad school. And it's very difficult to find people who have encountered problems like you before, or students like you before, because you are individual, and everyone is individual. So they have general advice, but it's really hard to get specifics. And I think communication between the departments, between the advising offices across campus, I mean, for goodness sakes, my, my major advisor is on one side of campus, and the graduate school advisor is on another side of campus, and the study abroad advisor isn't even on campus. So <laughs> they obviously don't talk a lot, or at all. And um, I'm the only link between all three of those offices, and. Uh, or at least in my particular case, sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing that's actually really frustrating is trying to get graduate school advice when the graduate school advisor doesn't really know my background. The best person for me to go to advice about grad school is um, actually, you know, my research mentors and my, my postdocs and stuff. And that's great for me because I have those people available. But there are people who haven't had research experience who don't even know if they want to go to grad school. and the graduate advisors can tell them some things, but they really don't know enough about the specific case. I mean, we have a med school advisor and um, professional school advisors, but we just have one advisor for all of grad school. I mean, that's a lot of subjects to cover. Can't know everything about everything. Can you tell us about your experience as a STEM major in relation to attempting to study abroad? Study abroad as a STEM major is uh, difficult at the moment, though not impossible. Um, don't let anything I say put you off because uh, 
studying abroad is wonderful. And um, if you get the chance, I would take uh, plan into your schedule if you can. Um, right now, if you're a freshman, right now, plan into your schedule. Try and take the um, upper div bio class that they offer in the summer. Try and take that uh, genetics class um, because the experience you get being abroad is so different than the experience here. And it, you know, we shouldn't just leave it to our friends in the humanities and social science majors to have had this wonderful experience. Because after all, what is science about? Science is about you know cooperation between people. We only succeed in science when we communicate. And uh, communicating only within our country is a bit self-centered, not to mention stupid, because there's so much more out there. And, and learning to be aware of that, that's wonderful. So we, that's important and key. And so that's, we need to, we need to integrate and make it easier for students who study science to study abroad. The, the hardest thing as a science major was getting the classes to work out. The system is not really set up to expect you to study abroad for a year. And so you have to do a lot of research on your own. Um, go to the school website and go look at the classes that are offered. Do your homework and plan ahead uh, because that's going to be your best armor against all of the craziness that happens when you try to go from one country to another country through a language barrier and uh, different education systems uh, when the system has not previously been set up to work that way. Uh, many of the humanities and social science majors have these classes already set up. People have already taken them. They know what they count for. They know how many units they count for. That's all finished and done, has been for a long time but not in science, and that's something that I would like to see happen. It can be done, uh, and what I would like to see is hopefully advisors um, communicating more, especially study abroad advisors, communicating with major advisors, communicating with graduate school advisors. All of those people communicating more would really facilitate the process a lot.